Hey, this is Lancer 20 Sided Knights. Today we're going to be going over the Cassitha. They're a player race found in the core rulebook, with some interesting entries in the Pact Worlds book and mentions in the Alien Archive. We're going to learn about their beginnings on Cassith, to their journeys on the worldship the Adiri, and their place in the Galarian system. Before we go into all that, I just want to remind you all to share this video with your friends and enemies, subscribe, and drop a comment down below. It can really help us grow. To begin our story of the Kathasas, we're going to start with their most ambitious project, the Adiri. Constructed pre-gap, the Adiri is the only vessel to be recognized as a packed world, with a population just shy of 42,700 souls. In contrast to the Galarian system's other technological marvel, Absalom Station, the Adiri is still governed in accordance to the traditional Kathasan values, and is almost entirely Kathasan, at a rate of almost 9 to 1. The largest ship ever constructed by the Kathasas, the Adiri is a colony vessel sent from the Kathasa homeworld to conquer Akaton. However, when the massive vessel arrived, the Kathasa learned the Red Planet was already too populated to accommodate both races and too well defended to initiate Manifest Destiny. Although capable of travel to distant systems, the Adiri has diverted its power to the Crucibles, the ship's government's run manufacturing sector. Kathasas are lauded for their martial contributions in the Pact Worlds and are honored even by the Vesk for both their combat prowess and ingenuity. Responsible for the production of the widely popular Hidden Soldier and Kathasa Microcord armor lines, and their starships are aesthetic and graceful. Kathasan starships boast a unique modular design, using a magnetic field instead of conventional welds, allowing them to be bound together or rearranged on the fly. These are proudly created on the Adiri by its Kathasan citizens. The planet's gravity, which is about one and one half that of Absalom Station, is granted through the ship's rotating cylinder, the drum, and is the largest part of the ship's body. Gleaming cities, rolling parks, and glass-walled hydroponic farm towers lie under the rotating walls. The constant day cycle of the Adiri isn't for every traveler, but those who are accustomed to it, or at least adherent to that of Kathasan homeworld, don't seem to mind. It'd be a disservice to talk about the rich history of the Kathasas without speaking about their homeworld, the now desert planet Kassath, located far from the Galarian system. If you were to learn anything about Kassath from the Adiri, it was once a planet brimming with life, all manner of biomes, from lush rainforests to desert tundra. Kathas is now a rocky desert world, bombarded in radiation from its star as it lashes out in its death throes as a red giant. The few Kathasas who remain on Kassath tend to be the most powerful and arrogant of the great families. These families are determined to hold on to the half-remembered achievements of a bygone age. Even in an age of interstellar travel and divine might, the Crest Eater holds a place of fear and reverence in Kathasan history. Ancient Kathasa saw these beasts as harbingers of death, a test for young hunters to either be exalted or meet an early doom. Crest Eaters are now kept as prized trophies and help fuel Kathasan technology. For more information about these other natives to Kathas, we refer to our video on the Crest Eater. Progenitors of the Kathasa, the Witch Ward's motivations for seeding the planet Kathas with life remains a mystery, just as they've sparked life for many other species on a dozen or more other worlds, like the Shobods of Akaton. The gap may be clouding the intentions of the Witch Ward's, but they are assumed to be a well-meaning race looking after their creations. Hints of this benevolence can be seen both in the spurring of the construction of the Adiri and in the Kathasas fleeing their doomed homeworld. The Witchward's innate connection to the stellar forces and those of the Void may be a hint as to why many Kathasa make for excellent Solarians. Government on the Adiri is overseen by the Kathasan Doyenate, a representative council comprised of the most respected members of the Kathasa milieu. These Doyens act as an aristocracy, and an enclave of a Doyen and their close relatives enjoy a comfortable lifestyle high above the common rabble. However, 
This position of privilege is not inherited. Instead, it's decided among that rabble, even at times against a particular doyen's wishes. For example, a doyen of logistics may not appreciate being pressed into battle zones for a more intimate understanding of war. All doyens have a say in government decisions, but some have more say than others, depending on the importance of the doyen's role. An example being a doyen of war may have the highest esteem during times of conflict, but in more peaceful seasons, their importance is greatly diminished. The citizens of the Adiri are free to travel and immigrate without restriction. Being from a relatively wealthy planet and part of the Pact world grants them a freedom of movement to others such as those born in the Viscerium would never know. Most career paths on the Adiri are in the government sector, maintaining the significant requirements of the ship of its size. Adirians residing on the ship for more than a year and desiring to be part of the ship's government must first accept and train for an auxiliary crew role. These roles, while mandatory, are only to be used in a catastrophe, and many Adirians take career paths without these in mind. All members of the Adiri society live in different sectors side by side, and the city-like sectors spread throughout the drum take different themes. Now let's take a look at some of the traditions of the Kathasas and those living on the Adiri. Waste is rare on the Adiri. Even the dead are fed into the ship's massive recyclers to be broken down into useful components. This is something not done without harder ceremony, however as the dead are first brought to the Solar Adata, where robed attendants, the Adata, harvest a hair-thin slice of the dead's brain, which is preserved and added to the temple's archives. These stored samples can be evoked to ask questions of the dead, a process that is neither novel or cheap. There are laws surrounding this practice, such as questioning one who has been dead for less than 100 years while crying a warrant. A tradition for many Kathasas in their adolescence, young Kathasas undertake a year-long voyage known as the Tempering, where they are encouraged to experience other cultures, even taking time off of their ship world. Many who have gone through this tempering feel a year is not long enough to learn from the countless cultures of the expanse and can fall into wanderlust or a life of adventure. Talavit is the revered goddess of the Kathasas. The storyteller is a goddess of community, self-reliance, and tradition. She is worshipped primarily on Akaton, Brethida, the Adiri, Triaxis, and the Vascurium. Her symbol is an ancient Kathasan sigil of community. Talavet is believed to have been born when stories of ancient Kathasas took form and awareness brought on by the blending of ideas and latent magic in language and communication manifest itself. Talavet is said to not only be known as the embodiment of story, but the eternal story itself, shared through wisdom, knowledge, and tradition above all else. In Kathasan tradition, the gap was a terrible blow to the storyteller and is known as the time of silence. While accepting of most others' religions and faiths, a hated enemy of Talavet is the Church of Naralepathet. Resenting the way the gods faithful twist stories into deadly secrets and conspiracies. Other gods of note to the Adiri and as such the Kathasas are Ibra, the inscrutable who governs the cosmos and the mysteries of the universe, Waden, the endless horizon, god of discovery, exploration, equality, and freedom, Elateru, the god of history, magic, secrets, and Demoratash, the god of conquest, duty, and war. Each of these gods and goddesses fall somewhere on the spectrum of good and evil and tend towards lawful or neutrality. The majority of the gods the Kathasas worship have much to do with community, devotion, and exploration of the cosmos. That does it for this look at the Kathasas and their history. Please share this video with your friends, it helps a lot. I hope you decide to subscribe for our other videos and remember to click the notification bell to be updated when we put new videos out. Thanks again for watching 20 Sided Night and bye for now.